All right, so I've just pulled up the carpet uh, and it's showing a very, very, I guess, a murder red. It matches my car, which is nice. Um, but yes, yeah, so I'm gonna pull this other one out. Looking at it's, yeah, this backspace is not too bad. I think it's just cleaning and just getting rid of all the carpets. And I'm gonna repaint this into a light gray and then do the walls into a white. Um, but in terms of the backspace here, and it's just getting wall shelves up all along, not there, there's gonna be a sink there, I think. Um, but all up along here, it's gonna be a wall shelf. So lots of storage, lots of pots drying. This usually happens when I'm glazing. Um, because I've been wearing this. But I've been wearing it because I've been uh, doing a bit of drywall demolition and the plaster and dust is equally bad. Just like, um, oh, I'm so tired. Dry material glaze. Uh, so today, I've managed that and I also cleaned up the back. So I put up all the carpet, I did a vacuum. Uh, now it's all dirty again because all the drywall is sitting there in the pile. Um, I didn't want to put everything in the carpet yet, especially with the drywall, it's a bit dusty. And I just want to make sure it doesn't like blow out into the alleyway and into the neighbors and stuff. Uh, I don't know what time it is. I think it's about 2, 3.30. So I've been here since about 9-ish. So I think I'll stay for a little bit longer, clean up this whole mess. Um, and then maybe cut out a little bit of the studs, maybe the, just the vertical ones, and then I'll do the... Um, no, sorry, I'll cut out the horizontal ones, and then I'll do the vertical ones tomorrow, especially um, once the electricians came in and capped off that cable. It's not on right now, so it's fine, but um, technically I still need electricians to do all that simple stuff before... Um, that's why I haven't gone and done all this cabinetries yet, just because there's drop lights um, everywhere. Uh, Thank God for the aircon. It's 32 today. Um, in here, working, it's fine. I'm still a little bit sweaty, but that's more just from wearing masks and stuff like that. Um, my arms are a bit sore. <laughs> I'm also covered in dust, so I need to um, rinse myself off. We do have a shower here, but it's disgusting, so I'm not gonna use it. Yeah, so I think that's day one wrapped up. Uh, uh, especially, I don't have the patience to be filming while I'm doing stuff. I don't wanna be like, you know, those construction um, YouTube channels where you film the whole process and it's all, you know. This is more progression of what I'm doing. Um, I don't want people to, s I almost don't want people to see exactly how I do it, just in case like it's really, really bad. Um, I don't want to get comments critiquing how terrible my construction skills is because I have none. Um, everything's from YouTube and thank God for YouTube. <sighs> So this is interesting. So I was hoping for underneath these floorboards <coughs> will be concrete. So it turns out there is this weird, weird, weird layer, fake seashell. Um, I'm pretty sure they're final tiles, so they're not actual tiles, which is good because that will be too hard to pull out. So final might be better. Um, and underneath it, if I can get my... And underneath it will be the concrete. So it's there. It's just two layers of flooring to get to before I even get to um, all the shit. And also look at the walls are pretty shit where you can't see it right now, but it's all gonna be visible soon. And same as here. So the rendering on the wall is actually coming off. So that makes me think if it's worth at least this portion, take it out and kind of expose the brick. Uh, although the power box is right there, so that might be tricky. Um, yeah, so I won't know until I take out this whole platform. Um, as so as that one, but that's a little bit of unexpected, I guess, work. Uh, yeah, we'll see how hard it is to take the tiles out. They, I've tried taking one out, it's they're pretty, pretty well stuck. Whew. Now, it's starting to feel a lot more open, um, just with that walk on. 
So imagine the back two walls will also go and it goes down even further. So the space is starting to look a lot bigger. Um, <laughs> a day of work, basically, to get to this point. Um, next step is to get rid of all those shelvings. Um, I, I guess they're not really shelving. Uh, clothing rack, I'm a bit out of breath. Um, I feel like I'm going to be really fit after this renovation because I've never worked so hard. Well, it's been a while since I've done like manual labor, so. <sighs> uh, it's almost midday on day two. It's only 11 actually, it's almost midday. Um, I'm still waiting for the electrician to come in and take a lot of the, to disconnect all the, because there's down lights in all the cabinet trees as well as up on the ceiling and I can't really do too much work until the cables are disconnected and it's all safe to do so um, because that's the legal requirement in Australia um, if you're not an electrician you're not allowed to even touch a single wire really uh, so once that's done I will be able to get rid of all this I just did the top plate along the wall because that was just standing by itself it's not connected to any wire so I did all that uh, on both sides that's why I switched to a light instead of because um, I had to turn off all the lights just in case. Uh, it's actually my video light, so it's probably like one of the most expensive construction work light <laughs> being used right now. But it's great, it's nice and bright, like a single light bounce up there, I can see the whole room. Uh, I've also started taking out one of the panels up here just to see what's going on. Uh, the other two up this and that one, they're full size sheets, so they're gonna be quite heavy. So I think the plan is to cut them down before unscrewing them, uh, and that way I can take it down, because I'm working by myself most of this week. It's just, it's starting to feel a lot more open now. It's gonna be quite echoey too, so I don't know if I need to install some sort of uh, sound absorption stuff, especially up top, but I don't know, I like it, I like it empty like this, but if it's too echoey, it might be a bit distracting for um, people working here, so we'll see. So, today is the end of day three. I actually didn't take a video at all today, because, ah, just, there wasn't much going on. Uh, so I started taking apart these platforms. Um, they still have lights in them, so I'm waiting for them to be disconnected. Once they do, I'll be able to completely demolish them, but, You know, that's going to be a lot of work, um, refinishing this wall, also taking out this column. Well, not the column, just the, you know, the panel that's on top. Same idea on this side, uh, yeah. And then back this way, I've removed most of the um, cabinet tree that was on here. I'm leaving the mirror for now just because it's way too heavy for one person. With the timber boards, I can just let them drop, fall on the floor, cut them up and move them to the back. But with the mirror, it's just gonna shatter and make a mess, so I'm not gonna touch that. Um, I've got someone who's interested in it, who's gonna come here and grab it. That'll be nice. And then I can take that down. That's about it, really. But it, it, it feels a lot wider now. It feels a lot more open. Um, I'm kind of in debate regarding, regarding this drop ceiling. All right, so the original idea was to take it out completely and just expose the ceiling, all right? But now I'm thinking that might be too much work and there might be a lot of, I guess, electrical work that's running through it that might not be worth the trouble. The thing is, I hate the existing panels. They're really ugly. So I've been thinking an option is take down the panels, hang drywall, paint it nicely, and they'll get a nice modern finish instead of the ugly, you know, old school look right now. And if it's finished properly, then that might be fine. Then that way I can have drop light instead of having a suspended track light. So that might save me some money. So it'll save me time and effort of taking the whole thing down and also refinishing it and doing all that stuff. It will cost a little bit more in terms of getting the drywall hung. So I might have to get someone to do that. If it's a wall, maybe I'll do it myself, but a ceiling, I think it's better to get someone to do it. And it's not a really big area. See how glossy this is? It's a bit ugly. Um, if it's, it's not that big of an area, so the cost won't be too bad. So I can just get someone, a carpenter, someone to come in and 
do that for me. Just weighing up the options. The best case scenario right now is I take down the panels, have a look and see what's inside, and then I can make the judgment call. Because right now I don't know what's going on exactly. Uh, yeah. But we'll see. I also got quote for the free phase connection to the Keons and the price is a little bit higher than I was hoping for. Um, right now the first quote I've got is $67,000 per Keon. So two Keons would be $12,000 to $14,000, which is a little bit higher. Like if it was six grand for both, then that's all right. So I'm just getting a couple more quotes just to get a comparison and see what that's like. But if that's the price I have to pay for the three phase wiring, I might have to cut back a little bit on the rest of the space for now, uh, just in terms of the startup budget. I don't want to blow it out completely and really, I guess, stuff up my cash flow. So if I can minimize that, so for example, if I can save a bit of money with the retail space, not doing as much work, um, then I'll have money for the wiring, which is more important than the space looking better. Another idea is also keeping a lot of this flooring in the co-working space and just draw a line at the front and completely cut that and then maybe do the polished concrete or maybe lay a new floorboards or something like something needs to be done at the front that's for sure at the back now i'm thinking maybe it's not so bad um, or maybe i'm just getting used to it i hated the color at the start it's so red i wanted something a bit lighter but that was more for the retail space so for the for the making space maybe the flooring is not such a big deal like it doesn't have to be as good as the retail space because that's more all about appearance and where back here it's more about functionalities and if it works it will save again a lot of time and money so decision decision like you have you have all your plans at the start but you know I don't think there's ever going to be a space that's completely perfect and fits that plan completely. So I just have to um, work for each, uh, each problem one by one when it comes up. Uh, yeah, so day three, it's only been three days. I feel like I've done a fair bit of work. For now, it's looking good. Hopefully nothing major comes up. Uh, I think the main delays might be if I have to get extra power to the property just because I'm not sure what my main power ampage is I need to get the Sparky or electrician to have a look and just make sure that we're getting enough power for both kilns to run at the same time so like the maximum workload I also have a plan for the kiln because we have a peak rate and an off peak rate for our electricity here if we can do Maybe not for everyone, but at least for one of the kiln, the one that fires the co-working space and for the class stuff where it's not as time sensitive, they can be fired past 11 p.m. each night. Uh, that way, I think it's about, so it's peak for me is 26 cents or 24 cents. I can't remember exactly. And off peak is 18. So it might not sound like much. What? That's about six cents difference through 20%. I don't know, my brain's tired, but it's, it's a fair amount. So it will make a difference, especially with the kiln eating up so much power. Um, yeah, day three's done. 